this guy. This guy. Seriously, right? Getting a hold of this dude felt like pulling teeth. I've had him on pre-order since the day he was announced, but ended up having to wait nearly two months after his release, and pay for him to be shipped twice for him to get here. And why? Well... Here. This is an accurate reconstruction of what happened, alright? I paid the customs. I paid postage. Just give me my Figma. Whoa. I've been waiting for this figure for a long time. I'll be damned if I let you bastards take it from me at the final hurdle. It was a long and arduous battle, but I finally managed to bring him home. So, without further ado, straight from the berserk movies of yesteryear, we have Guts, Band of the Hawk version, brought to life by the Figma sculpting genius, Asai Masaki. This particular iteration of Berserk's protagonist is from the time when he was the raid commander of Griffith's personal army of mercenaries, as they eke out in existence during the Midland Tudor War. And so, as you would expect, he's a badass in his prime, you know, before his best friend threw all of his toys out the pram. When I first got him out of the box, I had a major issue with swapping his face over. He comes with two faces, both requiring that you remove the front of his hair, just like any other, really. The issue here comes from the fact that the front of his hair is a stubborn bastard. You know when you're having a shave, and there's like that one patch that just won't go away no matter how much you slice up your neck to get to it? This is what that reminds me of. I eventually became so desperate to sort this out that I ended up somehow sliding his head out from under his hair, leaving this eerie floating head of hair behind. I wouldn't recommend doing this though, as now uh, the face kind of feels loose in there, but if you end up in a similar situation as me with a stubborn ass fringe, it may be your only option. So anyway, here we have his expressions, not shouting, and shouting. Well, that's pretty much all you need really, I don't remember him doing much else. I think he smiled, once. You can slide either of these headpieces into his helmet if you already might fall off his bike. The helmet looks great, I just wish the visor could lift up properly and not be fixed over his face all the time. I do love the way it fits around his head perfectly though, especially the chin straps and the ear holes. Woohoo! Praise be to adequately fitting headgear! Moving on to the torso and the arms, and all I have to say is this figure is quite easily one of the best sculpted and best painted that I've ever seen, at least as far as Figma go. His skin, as well as the various wrappings, have had a wash of paint over them to give them this darker, dirtier, more realistic look. Did you hear that, Max Factory? If you want to impress me, just drop all your moulds in muddy puddles, mate. And here we see the return of our favourite chunky meat hands, which limits him to only holding larger accessories, but there's really no need for anything else, is there? Owing to his size, wielding anything else would just look like he's about to attack you with a bent paperclip. His sword, while not as impressive as the Dragon Slayer he comes to wield, is still a pant-wettingly horrifying chunk of metal that he's able to swing around like a ninny in the series. The strappings on his back that hold it in place when he isn't doing that isn't removable, so if you don't want to pose him holding his sword, it's advised that you keep it in there or it just look weird. One thing to bear in mind as well though is that he comes packaged with this. This clear plastic blade isn't really an accessory in the traditional sense, but making use of it will save you a lot of grief in the long run. If left to their own devices, especially in the cold, the strappings on his back like to curl forwards. Understandably, that could be a bit of an arse ache if left for too long. This allows you to keep that unruly sheath in its place and have Guts pose with his sword properly. Fair play. When you're posing him, you need to be aware of these bits of armour coming down from his waist. It's made of two bendy layers, with the top tucking under the bottom, so before you're all like, DO THE SPLITS MATE, take care that these panels don't chew each other up. The joints feel really loose on this guy. While that was a little worrying when I first cracked him out, it does make him behave a little better than other Figma when it comes to posing, especially when compared to his older brother. Guts ascended rapidly through the ranks of the Band of the Hawk to become their raid captain in less than three years. Such feats warrant only one reward. CAPE! 
He looks almost nude without it, but it's also the source of my biggest grievance with this figure. While it is awesome that the cape is designed in such a way that the sword can still be held over his back and poke out like it does here, in allowing for that it just looks weird from behind. Unless I'm being 11 shades of stupid, there's no way that this can be handled to stop the cape from looking like it's levitating off of his back. A bit of a disappointment, but compromises must be made sometimes, like if you're making a pizza and your partner doesn't like mushrooms, you may be missing on the fun of fungi, but you can still make it work. After all, it looks insanely fabulous from the front, which is what matters really. So, with everything said and done, was this guy worth the wait and the bloodshed for me to get my hands on? You know it. The Berserk line of Figma are easily among the highest quality of poseable figures that I own, and it's great to be able to get something from the series without having to sell my internal organs to bag like an Art of War figure or something. Our Berserk journey is far from over too, I have one more figure sitting in the wings waiting to be reviewed, no prizes for guessing who that is. There's Black Soldier Guts who I'm looking to get a hold of as soon as I can, Casca is slated to be released next month, and if you see my Winter One Fest video, you'll know of more old friends joining the line in the future. If you haven't, click the annotation on my end slate and enlighten yourself, you won't be disappointed. So, what you're trying to tell me is, I lose an arm and I lose an eye, and then become Batman. To be honest, mate, you look pretty armless to me.